Welcome to Broker School. Um, not a real exciting topic today, but probably your most important one. Uh, communications, we're a sales business. Our agents are point of sale. If you cannot communicate with a buyer or a seller, you cannot have a transaction with them. It's that simple. So I wanna talk a little bit about phone systems, where they were, where they are now. And as you see the industry trending, we're going towards a virtual office environment. That's coming, I don't care what anybody says, it is happening. Um, the only reason we don't have them already is because people are stodgy and they expect things to stay the same and they're used to seeing things the old way. Interesting thing about the real estate industry, especially the real estate brokerage industry, you know that out of every industry in the world, we're like the slowest to adapt to technology. You wouldn't believe it based on the iPads and the iPhones and all the stuff coming out. It's not that they're out, not out there. It's just brokers and agents don't use them. And, you know, I mean, that's part of what we're looking to change. I've got a lot of people opening their first offices. I'm getting a lot of questions about phone systems. First thing is you don't need one. Do not spend the money. See, the original reasoning of a phone system, there were a couple of reasons. Cost of what's known as POTS lines. POTS, P-O-T-S, plain old telephone system. Those are the AT&T or Ma Bell landlines that we grew up with. Well, the problem is you used to, or the problem was, you used to pay for those by line. And the rule of thumb was you needed about one line for every three to four agents. So if you had 100 agents, you needed 30 phone lines. Well, the only way you could manage that was to use a phone system known as a PBX or a switch. Okay, your, the reason you did that was cost because your alternative to put a phone on every desk was to pay for a line for every desk. So for 100 agents at $30 each, you know, you'd have a $3,000 a month phone bill, or you could go out and spend 20 grand on a phone system, sometimes 30 and 40, I've spent more, you know, depending how large they were. When you're running multiple offices, it gets pricey. Or you could buy a phone system and take those same 30 lines and use the PBX switch, your phone system switch, to manage the lines. Because you don't have 100 agents all using the phone at the same time. Hell, you're lucky if you have 20 or 30 of those agents in the office at the same time. But that was a good rule of thumb. So the reason for phone systems was primarily cost. It allowed you to have more phones, a phone for every agent, also no longer needed, and share those lines because your cost was in the lines back then. So nowadays, uh, there were some other reasons too. The eternal switching was managing the lines and it was cost. It was cheaper to have a phone system because you paid for less lines. And then you had voicemail when vo voicemail first came out and that saved you labor cost. In other words, you didn't have a receptionist and a message pad. So that was to save labor cost. And then you had what's known as an auto attendant. For Sally, press one. Okay, auto attendants were great because again, it cut down on the receptionist time. So there were times when I had offices in the old days that had two or three receptionists just to manage the switch calls. Once we went to auto attendants, we needed one. And hell, she did was more admin work. Nobody needs a receptionist anymore either. You have an admin who can answer the phone if they have to. So that was the reason for phone systems. You don't need them anymore. Now, what you need is simply one or two VoIP lines. I'm gonna explain this. Every real estate agent has a cell phone. They prefer to use it. And God forbid you find an agent without a cell phone today. Are they really in business? Back to the phone system, voicemail. Cell phones have voicemail. <clears throat> of course, I'm losing my voice. So you don't have to pay for a phone line for each agent and you don't need to bring in a phone system anymore. They all have their cell phones. You need one main line coming in for your office. And that's pretty much it. You as the broker would want a line for yourself, obviously. And if you have a couple employees, you know, admin staff, they need a phone line. But other than that, that's it. Go to VoIP lines. A lot of them, I will tell you the one that we use is called Ring Central, but I'm gonna tell you some secrets about VoIP lines and systems in a minute. Um, all the software and everything that used to be done by a phone system that you paid for, back when you had to spend 20, 30 grand for them, they handle off in the cloud someplace. You don't have to deal with it. GUI, graphic user interface, that's a point and click interface. So if your receptionist does answer the phone and the customer calls in, they can click and the line will transfer to that agent's cell phone or whoever you want it to go to. So it's really all you need. You could literally open an office with a single VoIP phone line right now, have everybody work off cell phones. The fax to email integration is nice. And what you have now, and you don't need a separate fax line anymore, although who the hell uses fax anymore? I and mean, everything's email. 
but some people still use faxes. Uh, almost every VoIP line, no matter where you get it, will have fax capability. So that's part of the auto attendant that's built in. It'll take the fax or it'll route the call. Again, included, no expense. VoIP lines run about $25 to $30 per line each month. Now, there's a difference here, too. With the phone system in the old days, you paid for lines, and then you could have as many phones on your system as you want. You just bought the phones. With VoIP, you pay for what's known as a seat. A seat is a line and the actual phone the line goes to. So you can't put five phones on one line. You need a seat for each phone. So any place you're going to put a phone in your office, you have to have a seat, which is a line. So in that way, they are more expensive. You know, if you're going to go put in 100 VoIP lines, it's just like going to Mom Bell in the old days and having to pay for 100 phone lines every month. So we don't recommend that either. Typically, you'll want one at your reception at desk, one in your conference room, one in your broker's office, office, you know, for yourself, and then maybe one for each employee that you're using. So you'll probably end up with four or five. That's typical. They all function like the same phone system. They all have their own line. Each one of them can have their own fax coming into it directly. And the faxes go right to your email in a PDF, which is basically e-fax. Okay. So if you're going to do an office today, forget the whole day. If you have a phone system, forget regular phone lines. Get a couple of VoIP seats and make the agents work off their cell phones. They all do anyway. Okay. And even when we had regular phones and I had a phone on every desk, I would say that 99% of the agents set that phone to forward to their cell phone anyway. And that's assuming they're going to answer their cell phone because some agents aren't good about that. So does it, since they're not going to answer their cell phone half the time, what does it matter if they've got a desk phone too? They're not going to answer that either. It's the same thing. So, but most of them would set it that way. So the whole concept of seeing a phone on every desk is totally outdated. Nobody uses them. The only reason they're still there is because people expect to see them there because it's an old habit, but it's going away. The other thing is e-fax. Now, you could have a main company e-fax number. You could have five or six if you have that many VoIP seats. And they show up on somebody's email, whether it's you, your admin, and you can point and click and redistribute them. It's just forwarding an email. Uh, a lot of companies, um, they let their agents buy their own e-fax accounts. They're for about $5 a month for an e-fax number that goes right to your email. And you can send out or receive web-based. I mean, they're, they're pretty cool technology. Um, I used to pay for them for all my agents. It was part of our system. Or you can let them pay for their own. There is one caveat, though, and I'm going to get to that next. Okay, the only way I would let agents have their own eFax account is if it went to their company voicemail, or excuse me, their company email. That's really, really important. You need records of every document on every transaction. So we're talking about communications, and I hope I've answered you, you know, the questions I've been getting on phone systems. And basically, you don't need one. Um, and if you have a, any other questions on it, give me a call. I'm more than happy to talk to you about it, pop you an email. It's so cheap to open and run a brokerage office nowadays. But I do want to talk about emails. This is really important. I see brokers do this all the time, and it is the stupidest thing on the planet. It's illegal, and it's you're going to get in trouble over it. Do not let your agents use their personal email for business. Ever, 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 ever. Don't. Every agent, every employee has to have their own email account. It has to be a company email account. Okay? Their name at yourcompany.com, whatever you want to use, that's fine. But you must have control and access to it. Okay? You must keep all business emails for at least five years, longer in some states. If that email is part of the transaction, part of the communication between buyer, seller, title company, whoever it is, you as a broker are liable for it. You must have access to it. Okay? I've seen more brokers wind up with more fines, lose lawsuits because of this. I had a situation once where the agent was communicating with, this is probably uh, six, seven years ago, was communicating with the buyer and the seller off of her AOL account. Three years later, we end up in a hearing on this transaction. We could not get the emails from AOL. It was a personal account. They no longer existed. Had she used her company email account, which archives, I would have had access to it. Because we couldn't prove the email chain of what we knew to be correct, we lost. And thankfully, it wasn't bad. It was a fine. They got some, it doesn't matter. The point is, it's a really bad thing. Do not ever let your agents use personal email accounts. Other thing that happens, you have agents leave all the time. Turnover in a real estate brokerage office is about 30% a year for agents. When that agent leaves and they've got a transaction in process, those emails are part of the transaction. You need to be able to get to them to work on that transaction. Okay, you need those records. If they leave and it's your company email account that you gave them, you have access to it. You could lock them out of it the same day, save it, you've got it. Very important. Email accounts. 
Now, email servers. I used to run my own Outlook Exchange server. It cost about 60 grand. But at the size we were and the capabilities, it was cheaper than paying for individual email accounts, you know, through like Google Mail, which is who I'd recommend now. Google Mail has phenomenal company email accounts. You get every feature on the planet, web-based. It'll integrate with every other email account. So like I use Outlook through it, but you have control of it. Very, very cheap now, about $50 a year per account. And what's nice about this is you don't have to buy one each time you get a new agent. One agent leaves, you simply reassign that email account to the new agent, whoever you hire to replace them, and change the name. So it's really easy. Back it up, reuse it. So it's not as expensive as you think. The other thing is you can use multiple names on each email account. I can be mprind at NRBA. I can be mprind at mprind.com. I can have five or six different email addresses assigned to that account. So that's great if you want a BPO department at, REO department at, admin at, control at, accounting at. You can set up five or six different departments that each apparently have their own email address. They're all coming to one, one account, which is yours. So you can do some really cool things with it too, but I, re I cannot say this enough. Do not let your agents use personal email ever, not for business. It should be an automatic firing if they're caught doing it because, oh, the liability is horrible. I'm not big on broker liability because there really isn't that much. This is one you can get nailed on. So we're going to title this whole thing communications. So we've talked about phone systems and we've talked about email. That's your main source of communication. You must have control over them. Right. Any questions on any of that, feel free to pop me an email. More than happy to answer it. But these are the two things you want to deal with. And keep an eye on this technology as well. It's becoming much more affordable. And as we move towards more, and I'm going with this term virtual offices, this is going to be much, much more important. Thanks.